Hello everyone and welcome back. We have another trade to discuss. The Maple Leafs have pulled off acquiring a right shot defenseman with help from the Anaheim Ducks and the Carolina Hurricanes. We'll get to all of that coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at the Anton Talkie channel. Now before we begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. Thank you for all of your support. I'm never able to do with all of you guys. So if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below discussing all that was discussed in today's video. Now, I'm going to do a quick uh, video here discussing a significant trade that happened last night. And that was between the Anaheim Ducks, the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Carolina Hurricanes. This is another three-team deal, the second straight one we've had. And the deal is as follows. The Anaheim Ducks acquire a 2025 third-round pick from the Toronto Maple Police. The Carolina Hurricanes acquire a 2024 sixth round pick from the uh, Toronto Maple Police. And for the Maple Police, they acquire the signing rights to young prospect Kirill Sleppitz, and they reacquire Ilya Liabushkin with only 25% uh, of his contract. So the Ducks retain 50%, cutting it down to 1.375. The Carolina Hurricanes cut it down to even further, down to 687.5. And now that's his cap hit in Toronto, 687.5. So that's a really good deal for these three teams. We'll start with Toronto given the fact they got the two players in this deal. Uh, first with Kirill Sleppis. It's sort of the same thing we saw in the Cristana deal with Cole Brady. He's not a huge NHL name but he's someone that had to be moved to make the uh, deal work. So Sleppis is a right winger. He was picking in the fifth round of the 2019 draft by the Carolina Hurricanes. He's been playing over in the KHL over the past couple of years. Uh, last year actually did quite well putting up three assists in 17 games and this year has actually been fantastic at the KHL level putting up eight goals, 19 points in 53 games, which is a career high for him in the KHL. So this is really good news for the uh, Maple Leafs. I mean, it's not a guarantee at any means that Sleppitz will ever become an NHL player, but with the way he's playing right now, I think there's a possibility Sleppitz could eventually become a really solid NHL level forward. So it's not a really good prospect. It's not a great prospect. He's still developing over the KHL and doesn't even have an NHL contract yet, but it, there is a possibility I could see Sleppitz be a, eventually maybe a solid bomb stick forward for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So it's a really good pickup there for the Leafs. Not someone who they really need to add, but it's another young player they have in their uh, system and someone they could eventually use. So I'll have to see exactly what happens there with the KHL prospect, but Slapitz is now a member of the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, and hopefully after not having too much success in Carolina, still playing over in the KHL, maybe in the next couple of years he can start to become an NHL level forward and sign his ELC. So we're going to have to wait and see exactly how that works out, but uh, Slapitz goes to Toronto, as does the prize pro uh, player in this deal, and that is Ilya Lyabushkin. Now Lyabushkin has familiarity with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, during the 21-22 season, which was two years ago. Uh, he was acquired at the trade deadline uh, for a second round pick along with uh, to get rid of the Nick Ritchie contract uh, from the Arizona Coyotes. Leibushkin actually fit in extremely well with the Maple Leafs during that time. Uh, he had two goals, four assists, six points in 31 games with the Maple Leafs and then also had an assist in the seven games. I think it was against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, he will leave Toronto via free agency the following offseason. Uh, he went to Buffalo, signed a two-year $2.75 million deal. Uh, that was a really good deal for him. He played in Buffalo last year, put up 14 points in 68 games, was then traded to the Anaheim Ducks this offseason. So far, he has four assists in 55 games, and now he's back to being a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. So he's had a long uh, journey from the past couple of years after being a longtime Arizona Coyote player. So this is really good stuff for Leibushkin to end up back in Toronto. I am not exactly sure if he's the major defensive upgrade this team needs, but it's going to be a solid depth addition there for the Leafs. He can easily be a third pair right shot defenseman for this team. Playing him top four minutes might be a bit of a stretch, but also getting him at under league minimum at $687,000 AAV deal for the rest of the season. That's a beautiful piece of work there by GM Brad Tree Living. So I'm, I'm not sure if the uh, Leafs are going to be done. I've seen some other people say now they need to go out. This is a little bit of a depth move. They need to go out and try and get their big right shot defenseman to play with Morgan Riley. So I, I'm not exactly sure if the Leafs are done. I would not think so. I think it's quite possible they could still make some more moves. I would not be surprised if they went out to try and get uh, another right shot defenseman. Maybe one with term, maybe they're willing to move their first round pick. So I'm definitely not saying the Maple Leafs are done, but Leo Bushkin, who has been linked to the Toronto Maple Leafs for quite some time, was even linked uh, on a recent Insider Training video a couple of hours before a deal actually went uh, through. He does want to go back to Toronto. So this is a really good pickup there for the Leafs. And while I don't think he's the big up the grade that this team needs, they're able to get a solid 6th, 7th D for a really not too much of a asking price and for really, really cheap on the cap hit. So this is a really good move there for the Leafs. And even 
even though it's a little bit iffy and I'm not sure if they're completely done with their moves. This is a really good pickup there for the Leafs. So some really good moves there for the Leafs, getting a young uh, KHL prospect who could maybe eventually be a solid prospect for them and a decent right shot defenseman who's going to be a solid third pair of defenseman for the rest of the year for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So this is a really good pickup there for Toronto. And I think this is going to be a very fantastic uh, deal for them. So this is perfect move for Toronto and they still have tons of cap space left to try and make some more things work. So we'll have to see exactly what happens with Toronto, but I will not be surprised if they maybe try to add some more forward depth and maybe they try to go after a big right shot defenseman. Going over to the other two teams, they're only a pick to talk about. The Ducks were able to get a third round pick in order to move Leobushkin. Now I think they probably will have only gotten a fourth or fifth round pick if they moved him without having to retain any money, which is basically what they got for him. They gave up a fourth round pick for him to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange to acquire him in the offseason, so that was what I was expecting him to go. I think they got the third round pick given the fact that they had to retain a ton of money, so they get a third round pick back in the 2025 draft. It's another draft pick stocked in the cupboards for the Anaheim Ducks, and they weren't probably going to bring back Leah Bushkin after this year anyway, so moving a player who was not being brought back in exchange for adding another third round pick is a fantastic piece of work there for the Ducks. So not really huge pieces there. I expect them to make more moves. There's still Henrique that could be moved. I would think that Vertrano still could be moved. I do wonder about Gibson. With It sounded like Markstrom may not be moved by Calgary. It sounded like Saros not being moved by Nashville. There, there might be some teams out there who flip their uh, attention to Gibson. So there's definitely still some more pieces in Anaheim who I think will get moved. So we'll have to watch out for the Ducks. This is definitely not their last move. So keep your eye on the Anaheim Ducks as they expect them to continue to make some trades and sell off some pieces. As for the Carolina Hurricanes, not exactly sure why they did this. They're still a team which is going to try and add before a deadline. And they also don't have too much cap space, but they are able to get into uh, some of the retained salary money. So you do retain just under $700,000 of this deal, $687,500. And in exchange, they get a sixth round pick. It's not a huge pick. It's even lower than the Devils pick uh, that they got in exchange for uh, retaining on the Chris Tanev deal. But at least it's something. So they get a 2024 sixth round pick. They get an extra sixth round pick this year. They can either uh, keep it and use it at the draft or move it in a future uh, deal to try and improve this team. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens with Carolina. I would definitely think this is not the last move the Carolina Hurricanes make. There's still some talk about them moving D'Angelo. Maybe they upgrade their goal tonight. I could see him add another forward. So we'll have to watch out for the Carolina Hurricanes, but this is also definitely not their last move of the deadline as well. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens there. But just to recap, this is a very good deal. The Toronto Maple Leafs acquire right wing prospect in the KHL, uh, Krill Slepitz from Carolina. And they get Ilya Lyabushkin at only a $687,000 AAV from the Anaheim Ducks. The Anaheim Ducks acquire the Maple Leafs 2025 third round pick. And the Carolina Hurricanes, in order to help broker this deal, get a 2024 sixth round pick for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So some pretty good moves here. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on who you think won this deal. And personally, in my opinion, I do think it was the Leafs who won this deal, given the fact they were able to get Leah Bushkin, who's going to be a solid third pair of the fencing. But I also think the Ducks made out pretty well in this deal, given the fact they got a third round pick. And Carolina, in order to retain only under $700,000, good enough for them to get a sixth round pick. So some pretty good moves there for the Ducks, Carolina Hurricanes, and Leafs. Now, definitely, like I said, not expect any of these uh, teams to have this deal be their last before a deadline. So we'll have to wait and see exactly what else happens before a trade deadline, but this is a really interesting move. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this down in the comment section below. Let me know who you think won this deal, and let me know which team you think is going to be the next team to be making a move. I'd definitely love to hear your thoughts on that down in the comment section below. That's what I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video, and if you really liked it, remember to subscribe down below. Thank you for all your support. I'll never know to with all of you guys. So if you haven't already, hit the uh, subscribe button down below, and don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below discussing all those discussed in today's video. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So if you check that out, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for next video. See you guys soon.